guys and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Stockport. I thought we'd just start so you could see who we got in our group. We got Leon, Rebel Salzburg and Rail Sociedad. What I would say is that we haven't got, like, Leon are decent, but they're not like top tier. I feel like this is a group we can get out of, but what I also would say is that there's no real, like, whipping boy of this group. Ripple Salzburg are not bad, and Sociedad, well, we know that they've got Christian Obregozo. Um, I think he's still there anyway. So I, I think it's still going to be a tough group for us, and I think there's any... It's not going to be one of those ones that we can qualify out of, like, after four matches, because there'll be two teams that are shocking. I, I think this is going to be a real tough task for all six matches, frankly. Uh, but I think we're up to the task, basically. In other good news, Jamie Lane now has the new PPM moves into channels, very much like the Liam Miller one uh, that he used to have. And I think that was the final piece of the puzzle. So I think Jamie Lane might well have just gone next level good, and that pleases me. And speaking of Liam Miller, we had a bid for him from Amiens, and... It was of like four million pounds with some add-ons. So I counted with 15 and then they put it up to six. So I counted with another 15 and they put it up to seven. So I thought, oh, I'll counter with 15. And then they accepted the goddamn bid. Uh, and at that point I was like, I don't think we're ever going to get an opportunity. Like, Bill, bear in mind, Liam Miller's contract is up at the end of the year. He won't sign a new one because he wants a new challenge, but he was willing to not go in this summer because I wasn't that sure about it. But in the end, I was like, you know what? If we get 17.75 million for Liam Miller, then I'll bite your hand off, frankly, because he's not going to get in our team at the moment. We've got Anthony Martial as a backup, and I just don't think there was a place for him anymore. Like, when he did play last year, he was okay, but he just didn't quite have the impact I would have liked anymore, and he was starting to lose it. And to get seven, nearly 18 million pounds for a player like Liam Miller is an astonishingly large amount of money that Amiens uh, were willing to put on the table. So I accepted the bid, and Liam Miller has moved on. Our record appearance holder has finally moved on from the club, but I felt it was the, the right point in his career, plus 18 million pounds. Uh, Always very nice to get a little bit of moolah for your, for your buck. Blath Speetons, hidden team unlocked. Ah, no, 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 no. See, this is uh, stuff from the early days of this save, which clearly you have missed. Uh, back in the day, I used to... Well, I, I think I mispronounced it a couple of times accidentally, and then it just sort of became an inside joke to call them Blath Speetons. Uh, so that's what that's about. Should I be worried that the top ad for this video is bras? No. You should be encouraged. And buy one. Is September a good time to start a channel? Um, to be honest, there's, there's never a bad time to start a channel, but I started mine in September, I think. I'm pretty certain I started mine in September 2014, um, which meant that I had a month or so just learning the ropes, playing the game, um, learning how to make videos and whatnot, and I was just making them every night. I can't remember what my upload schedule was like back when I was doing Fulham and um, Pago Youth with the American Samoa Challenge. You remember that? Uh, no, no, you don't. Um, so, yeah. It's as good a time as any to start a channel. Always, you know, if you want to do it, take that step and do it because it is fun. And, you know, if you started in September, you'll have a couple of months before the game full, fully comes out. And then by the time that is out, your video quality will be a thousand times better than what it was when you, even when you were at the start. You, you will be amazed at how much better you'll get at it just by doing it for a couple of months. Uh, even if you've got no viewers, it doesn't matter because you still get to watch yourself back in order to actually edit them and whatnot. And you'll learn what you're doing right and wrong and all sorts of stuff, basically. And it's definitely worth doing. Quick question. When you talk about the games you've played off camera, why don't you just show the goals instead of describing it? Makes no sense. Well, actually, it does because I used to show the goals back in the day and it takes forever because the goals themselves take a lot longer than me going and then he put, and then Jamie Lane score one in the bottom corner showing the goal is a lot more lengthy than me just saying and besides i don't always describe the goals i'll sometimes just say we did well here move on to the next one i just don't have time to include all that what i will start doing though is showing some of the better goals like screamers and whatnot uh, because i feel like i need to show some of that sometimes but again there's a limited amount of space in the video and i kind of be taking it up with stuff like that but sometimes i do tend to ramble but when it's an exciting game you've got no choice and we've had a lot of games we had an incredibly tough start to the season like outrageously tough uh we've played six premier league matches i think it is or is it five i don't know it's a lot and and I think the only one of those teams that finished outside, apart from Liverpool, I suppose, um, but they're still a great side and they got to the Champions League final. So the only sort of mediocre side we played in that period was Huddersfield Town away from home. All the others were top of the table clashes. And like I said last time, I think if we got into, if we were even in contention after that, then we're on for one hell of a season, quite frankly. And uh, well, let's see how that went, shall we? First up, away at Leicester. And in all honesty, we did not play well in this one. Slowey gave us the lead early on with a wonderful strike. The ball was knocked down to him by Jamie Lane, pinged it in the top corner. And then Liviu Staiku, Russell Eels had a 
cross that was deflected. It fell straight to Staku, who hit it first time, bottom corner, 2-0. And then we just kind of hang on. Uh, Leicester created some good opportunities. We weren't great, but we were still decent and enough to get the victory. And that was pleasing and a clean sheet to go with it. We then followed that up with a very important home win against Chelsea. Early goals again, being a, a real part of our game lately. Jamie Lane gave us the lead. John Veer added a second. They were sort of interchanging goals and assists in this match, if I remember correctly. Um... It was fantastic. A, a good home win. Chelsea came back towards the end of the match, but it wasn't quite enough for them. And that was, you know, back-to-back -back wins in the Premier League to start things off. Beating Chelsea for the second time this year. Very, very nice to see that one. Um, Maya again, was sensational. He's had a bloody good start to the season. Therefore, it was a real shame when we lost 1-0 at home to City. Ah. They had one shot in the first half, and it was their goal. It was Petra Pellegri. It was frustrating because for some reason, our DM was way too far up the field. And I don't quite understand why, because he doesn't have any of those traits and nor was he set to mark anyone specifically. So I don't understand why Bofa was there, but that's what caused the goal. They did have another second, they did have a shot in the second half, but that was the only real chance of the match. We were definitely uh, up there and I think we deserved at least a draw from this match, but we probably should have won this too. Frustrating as all hell. John Villa got played through on goal and he missed. Frustrating. But then... I think the next game was a bit too much in our favour, in all honesty. Spurs were pretty decent. They didn't create as many chances as we did overall, um, but they had a lot of shots, more from range overall. Uh, we took the lead through Jamie Lane, as you do, but then Andrew Gregory almost immediately put Spurs back in front before Jamie Lane, with a wonderful free kick, made it 2-1. And then in the second half, it was the Julius Meyer show. Jamie Lane was fantastic in this game, though. Two goals, two assists, phenomenal start. Both of Julius Meyer's goals were indirect free kicks, which is hilarious, because at the end of last year in the analysis video, I'm pretty certain we didn't score a single indirect free kick the entirety of that season. And then we're going to get two in one game here, both through Julius Meyer, fantastic performance from him, and a 4-1 victory away at Spurs. That was more like it, and it kind of made up for the City loss a little bit, although I would have a draw would have been so much better because we didn't lose points then. And then in our next away game, bang, away at Huddersfield, fantastic performance on the night. We won. This is weird. Again, we started very strongly. Slowy and John Veer getting goals early on in this one. And then the game just kind of tapered off a little bit. Uh, Karius was superb in this one, providing assists, I think, for the Veer goal and for the late Jamie Lane goal, which was fantastic. Got the ball out on the right, whipped it in. Jamie Lane runs across his man, heads it into the bottom corner. Spectacularly good. Uh, Huddersfield obviously struggling, but a 3-0 away win is what I like to see. Everyone just doing their part. And then unfortunately, at home to Liverpool, we <sighs> this was frustrating again. Early moments in this game, someone missed a header. The ball fell to Ben Woodburn at the back post and he put them in front. And then literally the next moment of the game, practically, they got a corner. Ball was whipped in and Albo Alberto Pirelli made it 2-0. We then battened down the hatches and just went at them for the rest of this match, but it just wasn't enough. We created a decent number of chances in this game. Kevin Wright missed a one-on-one. -on -one. Again, uh, it's frustrating. And Abasolo did finally get us a goal back, and I thought it was going to be the beginning of a comeback, but it just wasn't to be. Liverpool just have something over us. Obviously, they played a different shape this time because they've got a new manager, but it's still frustrating. Could have done a lot better. But four wins out of our first six leaves us fifth in the league. And we have beaten Spurs away from home. We've beaten Chelsea and we've won away at Leicester. Like, there's some good results in there. But the home defeats to City and Liverpool is a bit of a bugger. But sometimes, you know, we've had some res lucky results and whatnot. So it's still not a bad start. And the fact is we're still perfectly in touch with the teams around us after having such a ridiculously tough start. We're bound to have a slightly easier run soon. And hopefully we can just start winning games, frankly. We've got to defend this title. Jamie Lane already has five assists in the Premier League so far, too. And that is really, really nice to see. He's clearly determined to prove that I was wrong to try and sell him. And Julius Meyer, of course, right up there in the average ratings. He's been defensively fantastic. And going forward, he's been ex excellent as well. You can't really go wrong with old Julius, man, can you? So, today, Lyon. Now, we've got a few little injuries. Uh, Niels van Dijk twisted his ankle. Orvigor Sunogor fractured his toe, so he's going to miss. And Sola isn't, allowed, uh, isn't able to play either. Eddie Howe is managing Lyon. I just, that's amazing. I do feel like, though, this is a gate. This is a group that we should be getting out of. Um... Well, we better be bloody getting out of it, in all honesty. Uh, we were great in the Champions League last year. We need to really throw everything at it again this season and hope that we can keep that run going. Like, I know we've lost a couple of league games so far this year, but I really cannot stress enough how tough the start to the season has actually been for us because losing to City, City are top of the league, I think, and losing to Liverpool, Liverpool are a much better team than they were last season, and they really gave us a run for our money, even though I still feel like we deserve better from the game. We're still looking pretty damn good at the moment, and hopefully that will start to come true once we start to play a load more teams in the bottom half. We've only played one team from the bottom half this season so far, and that was Huddersfield, and we thumped them 3-0. So there's definitely a lot about this team. And at the end of the day, we don't need to win the league this year. I would like to, but it's not the be all and end all as long as we qualify for the champions league next year that's fine by me because we just this is our main competition now this is what we're focusing everything on and maybe i should have rested players for the for this game but i feel like i just want to feel it out a little bit so maya oh dear we are struggling aren't we let's just see what comes up so is via via should be able to play this one yeah he's definitely playing this one uh eels lane mellow slowy bofa solert 
Yeah, he's probably okay. Oh, we can't play Puro. Roussel's going to have to start. Look at this, though. Oh, we are in a real bit of a pickle here. Um, Dimitrov, surely Kuil Bednar. I have to go with Bednar. I know he's a little bit on the naked side, but we need our best foot forward here. Karius and Vigo. Interestingly, Vigo's kind of struggled in the games he's played so far, whereas Karius has been solid. So we might have to see about that. Okay, I think that'll do for the bench. There's some of these players like Staik, who's just so unfit at the moment. So Martial, Vigo, Middledorp, right. ETS, Abasolo, and Staiku. That'll be our bench for now. It's not great, um, but I still think we're good enough. We'll see. We've got Harry Kane on the right wing as a round deuter, so that's interesting. But if we come out here and get a good result in Europe, that will really settle my nerves down about our Champions League performances this year, because this is a good group to be in, let's face it. Um, but it has certainly not got a massively weaker team. I mean, maybe Red Bull Salzburg aren't the team that were, for example. They might not be as good as I think they are. We'll see how they do against uh, Sociedad today. If Sociedad batter them, then maybe they are going to be the whipping boys. They're not looking too spectacular at the moment. I guess I would take a draw away from home if we had to, because I probably think they are the strongest in the group. Uh, although Sociedad are pretty decent too. Russell Eels whips it across, cleared away. Mello, lane! Good save from T.O. Henry. Okay, that, that's a bit better. I guess what I would say is that Leon have only had three shots and they've all been from range so far. So we're probably winning on that front. Oh, Veer's in. Can he get the finish away? Good save from Teo Henry again. Okay, that's another chance for us. Better. Okay, we're looking a bit better now. Slowey having a little drive towards me. He's probably going to get a shot away and he bends it wide. So look, mopping up nicely. Ooh, looking into the channel, perhaps. Lane might better get on the end of this. There we go. Nice, clever play from Jamie Lane, actually. Can we dig a cross out here? Bofa. Staiku. Oh, he's got... <laughs> God, Abderazak Slawi, he's dug that out of the top drawer. Bloody hell, what a strike that was. We've had, that's like the, the most difficult opportunity we've fashioned in the entire match so far. And Slawi's just done that. What about that for a finish? He's practically facing the wrong way. The goalkeeper's on that side and he still can't get there. We lead 1-0 in France and that is the perfect start to the game. Well, 38 minutes. Very nice. I will very much take that. I mean, as much as this is all red, I'm very pleased with us. We've had shots on target. We've created some chances. Long range was what it took. That's fine by me. And we've limited them to shots from range entirely. This might be the type of game where I might try a bit of um, uh, hitting early crosses later in it, just so that we don't have to get the wingers so uh, the wing back so advanced. If we can win the ball back off them, like that, Bofa, this is where they could get caught out. Via, he's got to find Russell Eels. Got to find it. He's not going to. Is he ball in? Oh, Slowey's in again. It's 2-0. Abder Razak Slowey. What a performance from him tonight, by the way. 2-0 up in France. Now, that is what we needed. Um, Not who I expected to be on the end of that, in all honesty. John Villa does really well here, just because he doesn't actually hit the early cross. He's waiting, and there's three players busting it to get in the box here. Look at the number of players we have in the box. We've got five men in the box for him to aim for, and he's managed to pick one out. Slowey scores it. Yes! He's going to drive at us. You know that. Oh my God, he's gone all the way through. Great save from Nagoita. That's where he really is strong in those positions. Solert's done brilliantly. That's not the best. Karius has flicked that over, over brilliantly. Eels has got space to run into. He's got to find Jamie Lane. He does. Lane. Oh, what a save. Wonderful stop. That's what Jamie Lane can do. Oh, Lane's picked it up. For Via. Round the corner, please. Slowey. He's then again. What a save from... Abdurazak Slowey nearly got a hat-trick. Just keep on doing your defensive duties. Philip Soller has actually been very good tonight. I've been impressed with him. And Karius could maybe pick this up and have a little run away for us. Look at the space out wide. He has to find the pass. Oh, he didn't. And maybe Vigo. I know that's three subs used, but they've done it too. Cleared. Here we go. Eels. I don't know if he's quite got the energy to make this happen for us. Might need an... Oh! Oh, and there we go. Via should have done better. Get that ball in the box a bit sooner. Don't quite have the fullbacks quite so advanced. Oh! Solot's just hit one over the top. Veer's in again. And it's saved again. We really should have had more goals. We've had three clear-cut opportunities and five half chances today. How have we not scored more? Remember, Salzburg are actually ahead now against Sociedad. So that is interesting. Really interesting, in fact. Oh, God, he's all the way through. He's got to score. He's hit the post. And it's been cleared brilliantly by Solot there. That was their chance. Well, there we go. A half-injured Philip Soller has done a fantastic job on his debut. Uh, we're going to win 2-0 in France. That is terrific. A 3-1 to Salzburg. Okay, brilliant win. To win away at probably the best team in this group is fantastic. Slowey's both of the goals for Abderazak Slowey. Fantastic performance from him. John Veer grabs another assist. It's always nice to see. And that is a terrific win. That is exactly what we needed to get ourselves off to the perfect start. Away from home, probably the toughest game in the group. Although... If, you know, if Salzburg are as good as they are, you, you never know. But I think that's a really great win. To win away, keep a clean sheet, perfect. So, next episode, well, it would be ridiculous if we didn't do a double live com of games against Rumble Salzburg and, of course, Real Sociedad. So, Salzburg at home, we've got to win there. And away at Sociedad, that's going to be tough. But in the meantime, we've got Fulham at home. 
Fulham aren't too bad at the moment, but they are 12, so that should be a winnable one. Millwall away in the cup, we'll just play a week, a week inside or whatever. And Man United away in the league. If we can pull off what we did last year, that would be a huge way of pulling ourselves back into the title race, uh, which is very, very important. In between the games, we'll also have Bristol City and West Ham. Slightly more winnable matches now, so hopefully we can get back onto good form for everything. Um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, do drop a like on the video. That would be tremendous. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe. That's the word I was looking for. It just completely eluded me for some reason. And I'll join you guys in the next episode for more Champions League goodies as we power towards hopefully getting out of this group sooner rather than later. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.